Welcome. We're going to draw this copy of this drawing of a wounded soldier with a nurse. Starting now. So I'm going to start by drawing the cloth in the background because that's a nice simple shape and that's going to help anchor this whole drawing. So it's that's sort of like uh, drawing the environment before you draw the people in the environment. And in this case, the environment is this very simple shape of the cloth. And we always want to just like start drawing the most interesting part of the drawing, which would be maybe the nurse's face. But that's, that would be a really hard thing to get to the proper scale. Um, right from the beginning. So I think it makes more sense to start this way. And notice that we can't see the cloth below the soldier's body, so we end up with a shape like this. Um, I'm going to draw that shape on the screen so you can see it more clearly. Uh, we're starting with the simplest set of angles and lengths in the whole drawing. So I'm even simplifying it a little more. And pretend it's not a cloth hanging on the wall. Just pretend it's a, what do you call that, a trapezoid? And just draw the shape. Try to get this angle, this angle. And just to get just to get her placed correctly, I'm going to draw some of these negative spaces. So I'm drawing the negative space formed at the corner of the cloth by her shoulder and the back of her hair. And I'm seeing this negative space on this corner formed by her arm and hand. This is not supposed to be accurate. This is just supposed to, we're just sort of placing the big things. And I'm going to keep outlining these shapes for you. So you can, you can draw them this simply. See, I'm looking at this angle, this angle, this angle. And now we're going to switch to the inside and we're going to do this angle and this angle. I'm now going to look for the big shape of the soldier on the cot. And I'm going to try to draw that shape. And these steps are important partly because we're going to have confidence now that this is going to fit on the page. And I'm making a couple corrections to mine now that these shapes are all kind of coming together. And you might see some totally different little corrections that you need to make to, your, to yours. But we're going to start with something like this. It's much easier to get abstract shapes right than details. So if you have this kind of scaffolding to hang your drawing on, it's going to be a lot easier to get everything else correct. 
Now I'm going to go in to anchor some of the rounder shapes. And the first I would say would be this head, which I'm going to think of as a kind of egg shape right here. So that's like that. And this head up here is going to be another egg shape. That's sort of the simplest way to think about it if you include the hat. So we're going to do this egg shape up here. Nobody should be pressing hard yet because these are all basically construction lines. And keep looking back and forth between your drawing and the reference. And that's what I'm doing on the screen. And keep checking to see if those big relationships look right. The next shape I'm going to think about is this arm, which I'm going to see as this kind of hook shape. that comes out from the head. And it extends about as far as this line between her legs. So I'm going to mark that in. It's going to give me a way to orient myself like that. And only now am I going to start thinking, I'm only now am I going to start using some of my knowledge of anatomy to draw some of the actual forms. So in a normal pose, we haven't really talked about this yet, but from the side in a normal pose, the rib cage tips back and the pelvis tips forward. So this is the normal uh, profile of a person. We get this kind of a movement. So forward, back, forward, back. Um, notice that we don't have that feeling for her because she's actually leaning forward a little bit towards this guy. So her rib cage is actually, I'll draw the V of her shirt, which is kind of help, help me define where her sternum is. Her rib cage is sort of bent, leaning forward a little. Can you feel that? It's a subtle thing, but that's the, that's what we mean with the word gesture. It's like she's, she's reaching towards him and it would look really weird if her rib cage were in a typical tilted back position like that. Now her waist, she's wearing this little jumpsuit. It's got very, very high waist. So I'm going to mark that. and define this contour a little better. And I'm just going to very roughly sketch the position of this arm. And notice that the hand extends all the way down into onto the bed. So right now, what's really throwing me off is her head looks way too big. And the reason for that is that I, I, that's not really her head. That's an abstract shape, and it includes her hat. So it's time to resolve that. Let's begin by noticing that the 
the brim of the hat forms this very nice angle which is exactly the same as this angle so we basically have an X right here so that's going to be an easy thing to create we're going to make that X make sure the angles are the same on both sides and this curve becomes the top of the hat This sort of turns into her hair. And now we're going to get into the actual face, and things are going to look a lot better in a second. I'm going to clean up some of these lines. And we've got this big puffy uh, bangs under the brim of the hat, which bends forward a little bit. And then her actual profile, let's see. We're going to place the, the jawline a little above the bottom of the egg. And we're going to center the eye on the head like this. And under her bangs, we've got the brow ridge going down to this tiny little nose, very strong muzzle form, and a little tiny bottom lip and a very small chin. Eyebrow, maybe I made her nose a little too small. Um, don't worry if you didn't really capture the concern, her concerned expression. Uh, just try to see if you can get the facial features sort of proportioned right so it looks like they fit on the, on the body. And I'm going to have to make some revisions in mine. with a sharper pencil. Notice there's really no difference in drawing between eyes that are closed and eyes that are just lowered. Like you see how she's looking down. So we're not going to see the white of the eye. We don't see the iris or the pupil. We just see this this little curve of the eyelid. And if your placements are good, you should have this collar coming from behind the chin. And the other collar coming from behind that puffy um, curls of her hair behind her head. I can see I didn't come out really far enough with this hair. And every once in a while, just mentally drop a plumb line down to make sure. Like, see how her forehead, if we come straight down, we're going to land sort of at this intersection of the, of the bed and the leg. And we're just sort of grazing the chest here. And I can see that where I need to give her some more mass is the back of this shoulder comes up a little higher.
and this might be a good time for me to pause for a minute and check your work because if the head isn't placed correctly um, it's going to be really difficult to succeed moving forward so I'm going to check that on yours in a second um, notice this artist is doing a little bit of smudging but you can also see very clear hatching direction so this is a study for a magazine cover it's not what he would have considered a finished work um, so if you want to smudge a little and see what that feels like I don't mind but it's more important to get a sense of the light with the with your hatching I just lifted her eyebrow a little bit to make her look more concerned and less angry. It's amazing how these little tiny movements in the face, facial features changes the expression completely. And So the reason that arm looks so huge is because so the elbow is right in here. So let's mark the elbow and then the sleeve comes down about here. And I'm going to put a construction line in to show how to find the sleeve. So if you work out this way at about a 45 degree angle, you're going to hit the sleeve. And the wrist is right under the end of the sleeve. And then the rest of what we were thinking of as the arm is actually the hand. And that's why the arm looks so long. So the hand is gracefully extending out past like that and hopefully you see how much shorter the arm looks now hopefully that's going to be true for everybody um, let me clean this up so you can see let's take a look at that hand um, it's very simply drawn there's the thumb and this finger in front and we can sort of see a little bit of the finger in back and that's it. Now before we draw the guy's face we're going to draw the bandage around his head. Now, remember when we I showed you how to draw the shoes on your self-portraits? Um, this is another case where we're dealing with a very foreshortened shape of the, the head. So it's going to be helpful here as well to, to sort of create it and think of it as look at the proportions of this form. And just draw draw a, a shape with the, those proportions before you do a nose or an eye or an ear or anything like that. So 
Notice this form is about twice as wide as it is tall. And it's kind of straight on this end and pointier on this end. And having done that, now we can see the nose is right on this end, like this, with a little hint of a nostril here. I'll zoom in on my drawing so you can see that too. And and that's about it. That's that's the head. Believe that. Well, yeah, he's, his eyes are bandaged. Well, I don't. We can't see his eyes, can we? Yeah, the bandages cover his eyes and most of his head, so. So another foreshortened form is his rib cage. I would think of his rib cage as it's really hard to read, but I would. It's under here somewhere. And it's going to give us an advantage to just as we draw, we're going to start shadow mapping and doing a little bit of this shading here because that's going to it's going to make the form look round for us and three dimensional that'll make it easier to draw everything correctly um, this is a really good example of an effective understanding of drapery Drapery is the clothes he's wearing, and notice these, it's not a careful study, but it really conveys the way these forms go around the arm. And if you can see where I am right now, this is really beautifully understood. You see this little looping form here? A lot of people, as I've said and I will keep saying a lot of people can render a photograph of a clothed person and draw every fold with total precision and that's not too amazing because that's what inkjet printers can do also uh, what this artist is doing is radically simplifying the clothing in a way that gives us the viewer like a very clear appreciation of the underlying structure of the arm and the basic anatomy of the folds and he's doing it with just a few lines and that is so much more of an impressive achievement than to spend like 14 hours drawing every fold exactly the way it would, might appear in a photograph Even following his lead, I can't get nearly as clear a sense of the folds as he as he has in this drawing. Now, when it comes time to placing his bandaged hand here, um, I'm going to double check this angle. I'm going to relate it to the tip of his nose, and I'm going to just double check to make sure. I got this angle about right and I can see that the fingertips probably come out a little further than I have them
So notice in this simplification of the fold, we've got this curve coming up, up and over, and then this curve comes up, not meeting it, but coming in right under it and getting a little thicker near the top. And that these little loops um, where the fabric compresses around itself are really essential in showing drapery. And I'm trying to follow his actual shading direction because um, why not? I mean, this is a good chance to actually see how someone else's approach is shading and to train my hand to do a few things that it might not be used to doing, which is all good. So the final project in this class is, as I said, a narrative drawing of your choice of theme. Um, by narrative, I do not mean that it has to tell a story as vividly as this one, um, nor does it have to be as realistic as this. It can be, um, it can have elements of fantasy in it or unreality. It can have um, surrealistic elements. Uh, and it can represent uh, what is sometimes called a genre or a slice of life theme, which is just like uh, somebody could be sitting on the stairs reading, somebody could be putting on their socks in the morning. Um, the story could just simply be somebody could be playing Call of Duty. So one of your goals is should be to start sort of looking at your own life with an eye to like, you know, what would I might what might I like to make a picture of of all these things that I see people doing every day. Uh, maybe you know somebody who cuts down trees for a living or cooks or um, I had a, a, a student many years ago do a whole, it ended up being her AP portfolio theme, but it was all about people doing Wii yoga. No, it was all kinds of Wii sports. It was Wii bowling. Do people even know what Wiis are anymore? They don't make them anymore, do they? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to back out now. See how I'm doing here. So notice this hand is honestly not that beautifully drawn. It's like, it almost looks like a rubber glove. Maybe she's wearing rubber gloves, though. I don't know. I, think so. I don't think they had rubber gloves in World War One. No, I think it's World War One. Wait. Um. Oh no, this is World War Two. It's a cover illustration for Life magazine by Fletcher Martin.
Yeah, so I think this. Oh, wait, go back. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to add this as a uh, as a window. So yeah, I'm yeah, there's Fletcher Martin. So this is the final work of art that was created from this uh, from this drawing. And you can see it's quite different. It has a lot more of a setting. Um, you can also see that he's made her um, figure more upright. And to, to me, that makes it, it looks a little less compassionate than the, uh, than the study. You see how in the study, because she's bending slightly forward, I think it, she looks more caring and involved. Yeah. So try to draw this kind of awkward hand. Notice that the fingers are almost, that's one weird thing is the fingers are basically all the same length. And they're kind of lined up like a pack of wieners. I mean like Oscar Mayer wieners. Like when you buy them and they come in the... Um, Pay attention to this sleeve, though. Beautifully, try to try to get some of these movements going on in this sleeve, and some of the try to get a little bit of that quick spontaneity in your drawing if you can. People don't really say wieners that much anymore, but. But they, they, but they still call them wiener dogs. You know, dachshunds, aren't they? Don't you still call them wiener dogs? Yeah. But you don't call hot dogs wieners. No. So how do you, when you, when you... Okay, uh, I think the group instruction part of this lesson is almost over. Just we're just shading and adding details now, and so. But I expect everybody to stay busy with it until the end of class. Um, I'm gonna finish mine real quick. Um. FYI, we go till, um, let me look at my schedule here, 59, so we have about 12 more minutes. So you got to wonder if this art, there were artists on the front, and you got to wonder whether this artist did this drawing uh, from life. Um, well, you can see that the, the figure of the soldier is a lot more resolved than the figure of the nurse, because uh, he probably would have been laying still if he's like in a coma or asleep or something.
I bet when this guy came out of his coma, they probably like they probably gave him a copy of the magazine that he was on the cover of. And he'd be like, "Where's where's that artist who was drawing me when I was in a coma?" He didn't ask my permission. It reminds me of the time that I was. Um, no, I was. I would always go on the subway, and when I lived in New York, just to draw people, and I yeah, I would just like, I would just take the train, and I would draw people, and they usually didn't notice. No, I usually didn't do that because I'm not known for the most flattering pictures. So anyway, um, so one day I saw this guy playing the accordion, and it was such a beautiful scene. He was on the subway platform, and he was sitting there playing the accordion. People were walking by, giving him money and stuff. And I really wanted to do a painting of him, but I didn't. I didn't carry a camera with me in those days. I just like tried to work from drawings. So, and I thought I could never draw this guy well enough to do a painting of him. Um, and then I realized he was completely blind. And so, I just sat in front of him and I drew him for like probably 40 minutes. And no, no, he did not, he, he had no idea I was there. No. Well, I couldn't show him the picture. Okay, I just recorded this on the video. I'm not being ableist, I don't think. Okay, I think I'm done with mine. I'm going to come around and look at yours. Um... Kids at home, have fun finishing this drawing, and don't forget to submit it on Canvas.